This is my uh, little uh, one inch by 30 inch belt sander. Um, <clears throat> the uh, design was inspired by a, a fellow YouTuber whose name is Justin Depew. Makes a lot of his own uh, tools. Uh, he's built a table saw and a belt disc grinder and some other things. Very creative fellow. Uh, uh, I've got a link to his uh, YouTube site in the uh, description if you'd like to go take a look. Uh, Pretty inspirational fellow. Anyway, uh, I like this design because it's, uh, first of all, simple, two pulleys, uh, and it accommodates uh, uh, sanding things of shapes and sizes and so forth that might not be uh, able to, uh, that might not be able to do that with uh, some of the ordinary, uh, more common three, three or four pulley design uh, belt sanders or strip sanders. Uh, I'll do a little video walk around on it here in a minute, but I wanted to give some specs on it first. Uh, it's powered by a 1 6th horsepower uh, AC induction motor. I think it uh, comes under the name of Japan Servo. It uh, runs it on 115 volts, 60 cycle. Draws about uh, 6 tenths of an amp, so <clears throat> low power. It's 3450 RPM. And that drives the belt along at a pretty leisurely speed of uh, about a thousand surface feet per second. So uh, it, it would not be great for sanding uh, metal or knife making or anything where you're trying to grind, grind away significant volumes of steel or metal or even wood for that matter. I built it primarily for detail work where I want to do fairly intricate sanding to the line and uh, removing material slowly and carefully uh, so as not so as to, to get to what I want. Um, that's said, it's a one by, it takes a one inch by 30 inch belt. The pulleys, top, both top and bottom, are one inch wide and one and one eighth inch diameter. Um, <clears throat> the uh, uh, height, uh, the height of this strip above the table is, uh, as you can see, about 10 and a half, between 10 and a half and 11 inches tall. Um, the, uh, the uh, as I said, one of the nice advantages of this, uh, of this design is it, it will let you sand on the inside of, a, uh, of an enclosure. Uh, the size of the, the size that will fit over the top of this is about one and a half inches wide and I think it's about one and a quarter, 1.2 inches deep. So any rectangular or circular opening that's bigger than that will fit down over that. From a circular standpoint, it looks like it will take, it will sand a circle, sand, you can fit a circle of about one and three quarter inches diameter down over the top of it. Um, the top has got some extra holes in it because that's made from a, a reclaimed piece of half inch Baltic birch plywood. Sides are made out of three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. Uh, it's got a switch. Um, and I'll show you here on the, on the front side, you might be able to see that uh, there you can see the bottom pulley. And uh, this is a piece of three eighths inch thick two inch by three inch angle iron that's, that supports the column. This, there is a, a groove milled in this piece here that the vertical column sits in and is just held on, then it's held on there snugly with a, a three eighths inch bolt. The column is made out of a, about an 11 inch piece of three eighths inch by one inch cold rolled steel. Um, this platen is removable. You can see there there's two little studs sticking out there that uh, there's a uh, the, uh, the platen is slotted so it can be removed um, and you can replace it with a curved platen that has a a curved profile on it and that'll let you sand uh, to the on an inside curve or a convex curve a concave curve sorry which was another uh, design feature that I thought was particularly good. Uh, you might be able to tell on the top here, 
Um, these are uh, 3 16 by 3 quarter inch thick pieces of cold rolled steel. They're fastened to uh, another piece of steel connecting the two together with screws. And then uh, uh, that whole thing clamps with the aid of a brass block or a brass threaded block on the back to this column and that, that, that assembly can slide up and down. You can also see I have some 6x32 screws that are drilled through this 3 8 inch shaft that the pulley rides on and that rides on that bottom of that groove so fine adjustment and tracking can be uh, uh, adjusted by the two allen screws uh, on either on either side so usually I just loosen I'll just loosen this screw here and let the whole thing slide down to to change belts there's a slot this this is extended off to the side so the belt can easily be dropped down through there uh, then I'll pull that back up and tighten it tighten that screw there to get the belt tensioned and then make any tracking adjustments with these two screws there again that's Justin's design I thought it was particularly simple and elegant and I used it pretty much as he had designed it same thing is true of this removable platen. Again, that design is copied almost exactly from Justin's design uh, and ideas. Um, this is, uh, here you can kind of see, see the motor. Uh, it has a capacitor start. It's three inches diameter and almost four inches long. It has a 5 16 inch shaft. Um, <clears throat> And the pulley that drives the belt is just set screwed to that shaft. Um, other than that, I think that's about it. I'll start it up. You can see it runs real quiet. Makes almost no noise at all. Uh, sands aggressively enough, but still with a lot of fine detail. So, uh, oh, one other note. The uh, motor and uh, belt assembly are attached to a piece of aluminum channel, uh, U-channel, that's uh, six inches wide and almost uh, two inches deep on these sides here. And there's some drilling uh, done and threading done on that to secure the, the various pieces. So the sanding assembly itself is all part of this metal assembly and then the, the enclosure is attached to that. Oh, I think that's, uh, I think that's about it. Thanks for watching.